I'm going to play a solo that is for unaccompanied trombone called Improvisation Number no. 1 by Enrique Crespo. When I practiced it in my house this morning, my small dog went running into the other room and barked and was very sad for the next hour or so. So, we'll see what you all think. Oh.
an enthusiastic lot more. <laughs> no one ran away like my dog, though, so. Um, like I said, that was for unaccompanied trombone, obviously. You can't imagine piano playing along with that. Enrique Crespo, the guy that wrote it, is a trombone player, which means that he really understands how the instrument works, so all the special effects work and the range works. He um, is from Spain, and you may hear some elements of that in with this sort of thing. <laughs> is kind of a Spanish lick. He conducts the German brass, and Enrique is one heck of a trombone player. As far as I know, at least what I remember hearing about this, is that it's composed of elements of his warm-up routine. He just kind of took what he does every day to warm up and mash it together and tried to make it seem like sensible music, though it may not to you. And uh, that became this solo. So you'll notice there are a lot of elements carried throughout it, a lot of open intervals, a lot of certain things that sound like they could be used to warm up, that are used as treated as themes. Um, um, the most important thing playing trombone is to have a good sound. There are really three things that matter, sound, rhythm, and intonation, and everything else is very secondary to those. If you can't play with a good sound, in tune, and the right rhythms in good time, absolutely nothing else matters. And probably of those things, a good sound is one of the more elusive things to come up with because learning to count is fairly straightforward. Learning to play in two note can take some time is fairly straightforward. But all the things that combine to make a good sound and precisely what a good sound is is, a little, is difficult to talk about because music can be difficult to talk about. Um, the most immediate thing you can do to have a good sound is know what a good trombone sound is. Um, how many of you have heard trombone played by people better than you more than twice? Yay! Who were, who were those people? I'm going to point at you one by one. You were the guys out there. Ah, excellent. I was out there too for a little bit. I will, I will, be, uh, I will be rejoining the Wind Ensemble tonight. They're a little short on trombone players. So me, the guys out there, anyone else? Yes. Um, some of the people at the, the Minnesota Conference Band Festival, sure. a lot of those guys are really good. Um, some of the guys, people in our own band, the people that are in the other band right now, Peter and Michelle, they're way better than I ever or ever could hope to be. Actually, yeah, and I don't know, just people like that. I doubt that they're better than you could ever hope to be. Well, they're better than I am. Aim high. No. Um, <laughs> it's good that you have outlets to hear people. Uh, you should go to trombone concerts when you can, but depending on where you live, that just may not be super feasible. Um, you can buy CDs. You can't necessarily walk into Barnes & Noble or Walmart and find solo trombone CDs, but they are out there. I've listed a couple of names. Um, Joe Alessi is the principal trombone of the New York Philharmonic and has lots of solo CDs. J.J. Johnson is now deceased, but a fantastic jazz player. You'll find his CDs easily. Um, many things are available from Amazon.com. It's become much easier to find stuff.